Today on Pulitzer Opal, we have the top five types of opalized wood, which is petrified wood that's turned into opal. This is Australian opalized wood, a very special type of petrified wood because it's made of opal. It's okay to call it opalized wood, but in the opal world, people call it wood opal. I thought you'd want to know. But to many of you, this looks just like opal, not wood. So, how can we tell that it is wood opal? First of all, the shape is somewhat cylindrical, like a piece of a tree branch. And if we look at the outside at the right angle, we see these shallow grooves or striations, which is actually the wood grain. So this little cylinder of opal is actually called a limb cast. And this term applies to all types of petrified wood, whether it is turned to opal or not. I have decided to make a cabochon out of this 78 carat piece of wood opal from Queensland. Most wood opal from around the world is easy to recognize. Most of them look like wood, with areas of wood grain and sometimes have the shape of a limb cast. But what about this stuff? It's not a limb cast and I see no wood grain. All I see is blobs of red-brown gunk. What the heck is this stuff? Sensing a crisis, I called in the Rapid Response Science Squad from nearby Pulitzer Opal University. And they have identified this material as fragments of prehistoric Swedish meatballs. Looking elsewhere in this opal, those bar-shaped pieces do actually have wood grain, but it's barely visible. So it is concluded that the meatball-like globs here are actually wood opal too. Long ago, this material looked like wood opal, with grain and everything. But over millions of years, it got blobified. Don't they use grape jelly to make Swedish meatballs? And now, the top five best types of wood opal. At number five, we have Indonesian wood opal. Opal was discovered in Indonesia by the Dutch in the 1930s, but was not really mined until the 1970s. Now, in most parts of the world, wood opal is pretty scarce compared to the amount of regular opal that is found. But in Indonesia, most of the opal is wood opal. The wood opal there is usually in the form of, well, uh, sticks. They are generally black, perhaps because they formed in a volcanic setting. Areas of bright opal appear on the surface. The amount of opal is directly proportional to the price, as it is in many types of opal. The opal is hydrophane, it absorbs water, and if it dries out, it will crack and disintegrate. In most places where opal absorbs water, the opal is stored in water. But with Indonesian opal, the goal seems to be to prevent cracking by trapping the water inside of the opal either by coating it with oil or with various resins, like epoxies. When I received these low-grade pieces, they were coated with a thick layer of oily liquid. I wiped the stuff off. I mean, I'm not a big fan of greasy in general. But this is my pride and joy, my best Indonesian opal, which is basically a branch with side branches. It's fairly large. It has a pretty fair amount of color, too, but it's not nearly as nice as some of the photos of Indonesian opal that you find online. But it's a nice specimen, and best of all, it's not covered with oil. I would like to thank Paul Cedaway of Ceda Opals. I not only plagiarized his article on opal auctions about Indonesian opal, but he was kind enough to send me some pieces of it, along with other types of wood opal, for this video. I sure hope he doesn't find out, uh, you know, about the plagiarism thing. If you see Paul and he mentions it, tell him that you don't know anything about it. And maybe he'll just forget. But I doubt it, because he's as sharp as woodpecker lips. I'm going to make a cabochon out of this 78 carat chunk of wood opal from Queensland, Australia. It's a little bit rough looking, but I should be able to get some sort of cabochon out of it. I removed the side of it to make the edge straighter. Now I'm going to round the corners. At number four, Mexican wood opal. This is a very colorful slice of wood opal from Querétaro, Mexico. I must admit that I have not seen a great deal of Mexican wood opal, but not many people have. It's very scarce. The color of this specimen is very nice, 
deep red color, and this is surely high grade in the spectrum of Mexican opal. In a previous video of mine about Mexican opal, I cut a piece of precious opal that, in retrospect, may well have been a limb cast. I didn't recognize it as such at the time, though. Take a look and tell me what you think. I think that it is a limb cast, and I just missed it the first time around. I mean, Sheila, it's your fault that I missed this. Wait a minute, that's not Sheila. What the? At number three, we have Ethiopian wood opal. In Ethiopia, most opal forms within bubbles of gas from volcanic activity. The bubbles become spaces in which opal eventually forms by deposition of silica from silica-rich water. Anybody who is experienced at cutting Ethiopian opal has undoubtedly come across this. It's plant material in the form of tiny, light-colored fibers that somewhat resemble mats of dried grass. It's not very exciting, and it's not really wood opal, but I suppose you could call it plant opal. If there was such a term, occasionally Ethiopian opal is found to have, well, sticks of Indonesian opal inside. I'm just kidding. It's not really Indonesian opal. It's just a stick that reminds me of Indonesian opal. This is Shua Province opal that I bought at the Tucson Gem Show this year. I did a video about it, and looking at the opal in the course of filming it, I noticed this. This is a limb cast, which you can tell by the shape and by the wood-like surface. I find it interesting that most of the color is concentrated around the edges. I've seen other opalized limb casts from Mwelo province, and the opal was distributed throughout, but there were much smaller opals, and the color seems to start at the outside. Coming in at number two is Australian Wood Opal. I'd like to thank Adam Sawicki of ASO Opals for providing these great specimens for the video. Most Australian Opal occurs in Queensland and Lightning Ridge, and the books say that it can be found in Cooper Pedy. Well, I don't read books, and I'm here to tell you that wherever Opal is found, you will find fossil Opal, including Wood Opal. First, let me remind you that wherever opal occurs, only a small percentage of it will be colorful. That is, precious opal. Most of it won't have color. I'm just warning you. So don't blame me and don't blame the opal. That's just what opal do. Most opalized wood actually looks like wood. So, if you find a piece of rock and it looks like wood, it's either wood opal or ordinary petrified wood. This is an 81 carat limb cast of precious Australian opal from Lightning Ridge. The shape is a little irregular, but it is a limb cast. The areas that look like wood are adjacent to very colorful areas. This is a great specimen, and if you choose to cut it, if you owned it, it would yield some very nice cabochons. So I'm going to make the cabochon flat. I'm going to polish the surface. So I've pretty much got it cut in half. It varies in thickness. It's not the smoothest cut in the world, but there's plenty of thickness. And as I the slice in the middle, would not have very much color. I don't think we have any color here. Now, wood opal from Queensland is a whole other ball game. You may not be able to identify some Queensland wood opal as wood opal unless you have seen this video. Aren't you glad that you're watching? Most opal from Queensland forms in ironstone, so most of it has a background that is some shade of brown, from light tan to almost black. These are cabochons of Queensland opal. The grain is easy to see, and I pity the fool who would call this anything but wood opal. The slender oval one is exceptional, with bright color in the grain. The other one is her brother's goofy friend. He's awkward, overweight, and out of shape. And some might even call him square. But no labels here. These other two specimens have wood grain, but it's not as obvious as in the other two. At number one, the top wood opal of all, Virgin Valley, Nevada. We originally had Virgin Valley ranked number two, but the other judges moved it to number one. Who are the judges? Paco, Touchy, Hopper, and, wait for it, Zuck. Sheila was considered, but was not selected because it was felt that she might be disruptive. 
Probably because she's a pain in the ass. No, I didn't say that. I said gas. Pain in the gas. You know, it's because I'm buying you that Tesla, right? Pain in the gas. Get it? Virgin Valley Opal is not really appreciated by most people, especially opal cutters, but like Indonesian opal, it absorbs water and the best specimens, gem grade specimens, are usually kept in display containers of water to keep them from disintegrating. Why do opal cutters cut opal? Answer, so that it can be used in jewelry. Opal that has to be in water cannot be used in jewelry, right? Well, maybe it can, but I don't think this is a good idea because if you turn around too fast, you might club somebody standing next to you. Hell yeah, I'll risk it. Oh, wife says no. Shit. A couple of years ago, a good friend of mine, Mike Hare, sent me a massive parcel of opal that he collected on his claim in Virgin Valley. Nearly all of it was wood opal, nearly all of the specimens were limb cast, and some of it was high-grade opal with lots of color. Most of that stuff was stored in a bottle of water because nearly all Virgin Valley opal absorbs water and if you don't keep it in water, you'll likely end up with lots of opal sand. But some of the very best Virgin Valley opal does not need to be stored in water. Conch opal is considered the finest type of opal found in Virgin Valley and one that you do not need to store in water. This is my cares chunk of conch opal. It's very beautiful because of the interesting patterns, but also because the brown background makes the color show up better, like in Lightning Ridge black opal. In conch, the opal deposits in remnants of tubules that transport water and nutrients in wood. Last question. Does conch absorb water? Is it hydrophane? Well, I put water on a piece of Mike Harris conch and this is what happened. So conch is hydrophane, but almost never breaks up when it dries out, making it ideal for jewelry. And this may be the reason the judges decided that Virgin Valley Opal is the best wood opal of all. And because of its great beauty and stability, Virgin Valley conch opal is considered to be among the finest types of opal in the world. Right up there with Lightning Ridge Black Opal and the finest Australian Boulder Opal. I'm at the polishing stage with this piece of Queensland Wood Opal. The granularity of the brown areas may not polish well, but I'm sure that will get some shine. I mean, trust the process. Trust the process. Well, what the heck does that mean anyway? And now for the final stones. Our Queensland wood opal cabochon looks very nice. Took a decent polish. Imagine wearing this as a pendant. People ask you what it is and you tell them it's opalized wood, like petrified wood. That's when the questions start. I suggest that you call it petrified Swedish meatballs. I have to say I honestly love this stuff though. This piece is a giveaway, an off cut, and I think you're going to like it. And finally, my best giveaway ever. I'm giving away my entire collection of Indonesian wood opal. And I might include the big opal branch. But whoever wins it, I will be sending it to you in a jar of mayonnaise so that the opal retains water. Bon appetit. And now our winners from the Barbie opal video. I can hardly remember it. The 20.9 carat Barbie arrowhead named Scarlet goes to Myra L. I have decided that the 9.9 .9 carat meant to be opal should go to Roy of Roy's Rocks. But there's a problem. I can't find it. I'm sure that I will run across it. And when I do, I will send it to you, Roy. I'm considering adding a second channel in which I make three to five minute long videos. There will be opal videos and videos about, well, whatever I want because it's my channel, right? I wanted to know what you guys think about this. No promises, but your input will influence me one way or the other. Thanks for watching. Sorry for the very late video and I will see you next time.